thank you, everybody, for coming in. Uh, my name is Pragati Suresh Kumar, Vice President Engineering uh, from Zopper. Um, I just want to have a quick show of hands before I start. In, you know, who here have uh, known Zopper uh, before this event uh, today? If you could show your raise, uh, raise your hands and say that you know Zopper before you come in. I see a few go up there and a few over here. <coughs> okay, that's, uh, that's kind of what I expected, actually. So, um, you, know, <laughs> you know, it is, uh, you, know, you know, I think, uh, you know, Zopper, uh, I, it's, you know, we just recently opened our center in Bangalore, uh, trying to build an R&D center here and also uh, you know, sales and marketing team that takes care of the southern region. Um, you know, there are 175 strong company, employees company. Uh, most of them are in Noida. And there are like, uh, you know, we have like presence in you know, all the cities that we have launched so far. Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that I'm two weeks into this job. Uh, you know, I've been previously in the corporate, uh, been working in the corporate world for many years and a couple of, uh, you know, startups in the Bay Area before I moved to Bangalore, relocated for good here, and you know, wanted to participate in Zopper uh, to to make a change, like a social change. I'll tell you a little bit when I get into what we are doing uh, in Zopper and how that uh, change is going to come about. And I'm very, uh, very upbeat about it and looking forward to 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 participate in that. Um, so the, the structure of today's talk is, is, is you know, I'm going to be talking about uh, the Zopper as a platform, how, uh, you know, what problems we are solving, and, uh, and then uh, you know, talk about some of the interesting areas, a couple of interesting areas where it's new, and uh, uh, you know, what the new products that we're launching there, and also talk about some of the technology stack that we have, followed by a demo uh, of two, two demos, in fact, uh, showing uh, some of the problems that we are solving in Zopper and how it's getting solved. Um, so that will be taken care of by, by our lead scientist, uh, Vinay Pandey, and, and Siddharth, who's, who is going to come and join me uh, later in the stage. Um, so let's, uh, let's just get right in here. So, <clears throat> so the message from Zopper is that I think we want to be uh, you know, an e-commerce play. You know, we want to be actually uh, uh, you know, differentiated from the existing players out in the market. And you know, e-commerce, as we know, has actually revolutionized the uh, you know uh, the marketplace already, right? I think it's created a new business model, and uh, you know what we are going to be uh, doing here in the e-commerce play is to bring in the hyperlocal dimension to it, right? And you know that changes a lot of equation actually in, in our in our mind, and and that's the actual you know in my in my opinion that's an inclusive model. You know where you know the all of the infrastructure are the problems that you know the e-commerce companies try to you know uh, solve, like you know deliver in a short time, and you know and, and also take care of the uh, uh, you know the price points and you know discovery and all that. I think you know right now all of those sol problems are solved by the local firms that are physically present in your neighborhood, right? Those problems are already solved, right? Why don't why don't we tap into that uh, particular uh, expertise? Uh, that they have already given. So we built a new uh, e-commerce model, which is an inclusive model, where I, I call it as an Indian model of e-commerce, uh, to uh, where I think in India we have a strong local connection with the, uh, with the neighborhood that we live in, right? So the local community. Um, so this picture kind of depicts that, you know, there are stores in your neighborhood where you live and you use your shop, you know, uh, use your phone to basically do shopping, kind of know, you know what's going on there. And it, it, it is basically offers you convenience because, you know, I think in today's world, if you're in Bangalore, you know, you know how much of a traffic that we need to go through, navigate through to go to stores from, you know, store A to store B. You know, it's a, it's a hassle, right? I think, you know, we offer the convenience where, you know, you could, uh, you could look at the you know, pricing of uh, the product, particular product in a different store, and also, you know, what kind of, you know, products that they have uh, carry, and 24 by 7, right? I think, you know, you don't have to worry about the store. Uh, store hours anymore. I think you know you can uh, you know jump into the app and and probably you know take uh, take that convenience there. Uh, you know e-commerce have actually offered to to everybody, right? And you know the third point is actually quite uh, you know, quite interesting is that what I you know kind of referred to in the initial um, in the initial talk, right? So social impact. If you see that the neighborhood, right? I think the the, the local firms, uh, you know, the local retailers there. Um, you know, they are actually the uh, what I call the lifeline of the economy, the local community economy, right? They they basically uh, give jobs in the neighborhood and also the real estate uh, that they occupy, right? So there is a lot of uh, social impact that we uh, that we are trying to bring in as well. When you 
when you shop from us, it, you are actually shopping from one of those stores that you know in your neighborhood or in your city. Uh, you know, who is going to be servicing your request, and you know that it's, it's coming from them. And you know, um, I'll, I'll talk about you know a few aspects of the hyperlocal. Uh, you know, I think the the uh, you know the typical you know the shopper, right? Uh, or, you know, in the traditional ways before e-commerce, they go uh, from store A to store B, compare the prices, and understand what they uh, what they offer. <laughs> And then, then you know, pick uh, pick another spot, you know, because the uh, uh, the products that the shoppers buy is kind of like an investment that they make because they're buying a TV or a home appliance. It's not it's not an impulsive purchase. You just like wake up in the morning, go and go online and buy it. I think there's a you know discovery process, which is a lengthy process. In the hyperlocal, you know, the users have been used in a, in a traditional ways to go from shop A to shop B, compare the prices, and we're going to try and bring in all those aspects of it as uh, as, as a hyperlocal, uh, you know, uh, uh, facet. So uh, as I was also saying that you know we are not about the impulsive purchases where you just go and buy online and, and you know forget about the, after the transaction is completed. We we look at the uh, the whole life cycle of that uh, you know experience, and you know product discovery as I mentioned is like you know it's, it's a it's, it depends upon the product. You just like you know if you buy clothes probably you just wake up in the morning buy a couple of t-shirts that's fine. But I think if you're buying a TV or a home appliance like a uh, you know, uh, you know, washing machines and, and refrigerators. It's, it's, a, it's a lengthy, you know, process. I think the discovery process is very unique in hyperlocal, and uh, you know, and these are investments. The purchases are we look at this as investments, not not like you know transactions, right? Uh, you know, there's a huge difference between investment and a transaction. So these investments need to be protected, and this protection we we going to be uh, in not just protection, but also that covers under warranty and services, but also the delivery and installation of these kind of products is actually. You know, it's not simple, right? You need uh, technicians come in and do that, right? Uh, so, you know, that the local connection. Basically, you you buy it from a local store. You know that that's going to be taken care of, or at least, or at least you know that you can go and ask the particular person, and say, I want uh, you know this kind of services. You know, come and deliver it. Come, you know, I'm I'm right now available. Just call up the guy and say, you know, do you want to come now? And they come and do the set, you know installation and setup or whatever. I think that connection is very very unique in e-commerce, uh, you, know, you know, in hyperlocal space, uh, which which the e-commerce do not offer. Right, and warranty of services is basically these investment need to be protected, and, and, and warranty is basically the the, uh, the warranty given by the manufacturer. But I think we have the extended warranty that covers, you know, beyond that period, like two or three years period, where we can introduce new products that are called Zopper Assure, that takes care of much of your hassles going through your customer service support. I'll talk about that uh, when I get the, get that uh, get that slide uh, later in the uh, in the talk. And and then the life cycle of the product basically you know doesn't uh, you know uh, it, it doesn't end with the services but also you know how do you recycle it you know how do you you know once it gets whole how do you upgrade that to a newer version so you just you, know, you need to exchange that to a different uh, you know new product so we also come in the local you know market uh, you know local firms are already doing it retailers so we're going to tap into that kind of expertise as well and, and make sure that you know exchanges are also taken care of so you get into a new product cycle all over again right. So we look at this hyper local as a, as a wholesome, you know, uh, you know, into an ecosystem rather than a particular uh, particular uh, segment of it. Not not just delivery or not just you know discovery. We look at it from end to end perspective. And uh, product discovery. I want to take like two two out of that cycle, right? Uh, product discovery is one of the biggest problems that we're trying to solve. And, and the second aspect of this is I mentioned about the warranty and services. So I'm going to take this big uh, two two items and you know. Uh, you know, our, our, our lead scientist here would, would come in and uh, you know, show us some of the problems and how they are solving it. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the challenge that we have here is very unique because of the hyperlocal uh, you know, aspect of it. So we have uh, sellers of all different size, uh, sizes, right? You know, from, uh, they are organized, they are tech savvy, some of them, uh, you know, some of them may not be. You know, I think we need to build technology for all of them because we are asset light category. We don't carry any kind of uh, inventory ourselves. It's very easy for e-commerce player to just have inventory, have build a website, and sell it online, right? I think we need to build the inventory, right? And its inventory is going to be different from a location to another location, right? Because what's, what's trending here, what's being you know, bought over here in, in, this, in this area will be entirely different from what's being bought in Mumbai or in, in Delhi. Uh, for example, right? I think you know that local connection, that local uh, sort of uh, uh, you know uh, knowledge. I think uh, you know we need to bring in uh, when we talk about hyperlocal. And uh, you know our biggest pro you know uh, challenges is to you know build technology that works for all of these sellers, where they can uh, come and publish their inventory. 
uh, that can be sold in our marketplace and, and also the price information, right? So these, these get fed into our system and we, we built up the listing based on your location. Uh, you know, we kind of come up with uh, the, uh, based on the trending in your area, based on what's going on, uh, you, you know, uh, what, what others are buying, what price others are buying. So you, you get to know all of this information and, you know, we'll probably uh, uh, will, 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 will build you an experience that, you know, e-commerce companies today offer. So, so behind the scene, it's entirely different from you know, what, uh, what others do and I think what we do. So, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, product uh, listing is, is actually one aspect of the discovery. Uh, you know, listing is number one and then after, the, after you list, the discovery takes place in our app, right? So the uh, our app is basically is, is the entry point. Uh, you know, uh, today we are only app only. Uh, we launched in Android market. We uh, recently uh, launched in iOS. You know, a few weeks ago. So uh, so we're going to have Android and iOS. Uh, you know, apps uh, so you can download and, and install and and you know play around with it. And you know your suggestions or uh, you know your purchase. We're looking forward to your purchase as well from your local community. Um, so, you know, discovery is something that, you know, I think some of the challenges that you're solving there is, is going to be, there's going to be a demo that Vinaya is going to be showing uh, a little later. <coughs> the next product, the, the problem, that problem area that you're trying to solve, uh, you know, is the, uh, is the um, warranty and services area. Like Zopper Azure is a new product that you're launching, all right, that's been launched. Uh, you know, we're going to come up with, uh, 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 with an, uh, uh, more extensive coverage for all the products that you buy and you know most of the things that we run into in the past is that you know when you want to claim warranty you typically most of most of them won't have the receipts in in, in order or you know once you even know what model or uh, make that you purchased or where you bought it from or what price you bought it from all of this information is kind of like uh, kind of in a clutter or you need to sweep them through and once you get hold of all this information you need to call the customer support and, and I know how much of a pain it is to go through that and and we're going to introduce one touch claim service where you know you will use the app you know whatever products you purchase you know either in our uh, in our app or in our local community uh, as well so uh, we're going to be a uh, local store as well if you if you, if you, you know if you purchase that we're going to be able to do that one touch uh, you know uh, servicing uh, no documentation and we're going to give peace of mind absolutely free right and uh, coming to the technology part, these are the stacks that some of some of the you know stacks that we use uh, to solve some of the problems. And this keeps changing. Then, then the list keeps growing. Actually, I, I could put, just put some of them here. Uh, yeah, some of them are actually uh, you know there are uh, some more that we are uh, working on. And I think this this pretty much uh, covers the most part, uh, I guess. Um, that's uh, that's it for me. And I would like uh, you know Vinay Pandey and Siddharth to come over here. And uh, you know, uh, before uh, Wiley is coming and setting up here, probably I can ask a couple of questions, and and we can uh, you know give us some goodies if somebody answers them. Yeah. So, um, I, I thought of taking questions later on, but I think if you have questions, that's fine. I thought you know I could run some quiz program. Uh, okay. I don't need this. Okay. It's, it's so, okay. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, that's a great question. I think we what we you know we you know I just want to make sure I set the context. I think we are into consumer electronics durables right now. Like not not all mom and pop stores, but all brick and mortar stores who sell this uh, goods. So the the onboarding process is entirely uh, you know entirely different um, from what uh, uh, what typically does. So they do not come on board themselves, right? I think it's an offline process, and there is a lot of handholding because we 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 go through uh, you know tons of checks and uh, balances before we onboard a seller uh, because we want to main we want to make sure that you know our service level is met. Right, uh, you know, I think we want to guarantee that uh, Zopper service level and also the uh, the products that they buy is is uh, you know 100% trusted product, not like any China make or you know any other stuff kind of stuff. Right, so I think there's a lot of uh, background you know onboarding process that goes on before we launch to a new city. There is a lot of uh, you know work that goes on. So we we are uh, uh, launched in many cities. So one of the questions I want to ask is, can you guys guess how many uh, cities we will be in by the end of the year? Any rough guesses? I know I have, you know, I've not mentioned that here. Uh, 10 by another year? Uh, not even close. <laughs> um, yeah, you're getting there. 40. Somebody said 40. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're targeting by another year. Um, <coughs> okay. Any other uh, questions you want to throw in? Um, all right, and, and um, we'll, we'll keep that for people who ask questions in the end. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the stage to uh, um, Vinay Pandey. Vinay, you want, you want to take this from me here? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I would like to request everyone, uh, anyone who's using uh, like hotspot here, 
because it's going like it's disrupting everything and uh, because the Python India this uh, SSID should be working, okay. And uh, if you are using hotspot, it's gonna like ruin everyone here. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Yesterday you didn't get internet. <laughs> so yeah, today hopefully uh, like if you have to use it, then please uh, USB tether or something else. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's good now. So yeah. So uh, thanks, Bhardesh, uh, for uh, introduction part. So yeah, I'm Vinay Pandey. Uh, I'm talking about uh, data science perspective or the technological challenges that actually uh, we have to face. Okay. So uh, so basically, uh, what you think is different uh, or challenging in hyperlocal market as compared to online e-commerce portals like Flipkart? Can you miss any guesses here? Okay. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, we are hyperlocal market. So it's like we are distributed across uh, cities, right? We have lots of cities to cover, and each city has its own set of problem, right? So when we talk about Flipkart, so Flipkart has its own warehouse. So even if uh, you are ordering something from Delhi and its warehouse is in Bangalore, they can actually provide you uh, using the, their logistics, right? We are not providing logistics. So the first challenge uh, that we have to face is like demand versus supply. So we have to face, uh, we have to uh, check exactly in which area user is searching what and do we have that thing in our inventory, right? So second thing uh, for this, actually we need a very strong catalog. But uh, the catalog population uh, method that we use is like, we collect uh, browsers from different vendors uh, for their catalog. We have uh, our own uh, app for vendors as well, where they can uh, uh, provide information about their catalog or they can populate their catalog there so that we can load it into our centralized Zopper catalog. Okay, but many times it happens that they uh, didn't provide complete information. Sometimes the catalog is uh, wrong Sometimes they just provide partial information. Okay, so this is uh, one of the biggest challenge that we face for last uh, miss, uh, in last six months. So uh, how we solved it using Python stack and uh, using machine learning that uh, I will sh show you a demo. And as uh, someone here mentioned here that we have to provide customized solution for each user because each user uh, is unique for us, uh, his requirement is very unique. And if we are not catering that requirement uh, in timely basis and in a proper way, then there may be a chance then he can just go to online market to buy the products, right? So yes, uh, to solve this, uh, so we use smart techniques uh, here. The first thing that, uh, the first case study I'm talking about is automatic catalog population. Okay, so what was the objective? So many times it happens that we got brochures from vendors, but it didn't have complete information. So let's say if you are talking about, uh, if a product is a mobile phone, if a particular seller is selling a mobile phone, then he just gave us a name of that mobile phone or model numbers. All the other attributes that is there that we have to fill it. So there are two options for this. Either uh, we have to, populate this using websites, right? So we have to go to uh, different websites like Flipkart, uh, Snapdeal, check their, uh, the attributes, and then manually fit it into our own system. Or we can automate the system, means basically we can actually crawl the pages, then we can parse it, and we can, uh, after parsing, we can process the information and solve the process. But this overall pipeline has a uh, few challenges. First challenge is uh, the data that we crawled is not sane. It, ha it contains lots of noise, actually, right? So the first issue that we have faced is how to extract valid information from noise. And the second problem that we face here was uh, that basically the HTML uh, structure is continuously changing. Okay, so for example, when we crawl a particular web page one month back, 
its html architecture is different its nodes are different containing information but when we crawl it today either that node is not present there or there are some different nodes which contains the valid information right so we uh, actually use scrapi to scrap all this information uh, and then we have a man team which manually checks uh, the nodes valid nodes then they actually try to uh, extract uh, valid nodes from html and then using xpath we used to extract fields but this is very tedious task so for example uh, our iterations uh, used to take 15 days just to crawl one uh, means just to complete one cycle we need 15 days so if you want to scale and if you actually want to provide uh, good service then we have to improve right so uh, here we try to solve a problem that can we actually automate this process of uh, extracting information or finding valid information from page okay so here we have to solve uh, two problems first getting valid information getting the node which actually contains valid information first and then extracting that valid information in a format so that we can populate our catalog okay so <clears throat> for example just i will give you small information so let's say this is a page from flipkart okay what we are interested is something like this where we have attributes and we want their values right but if you actually uh, crawl that page and start processing what you get is this it contains valid information but lot of noise right lots of noise so how to solve this yeah okay so we do have lots of domain specific knowledge with us like uh, we actually uh, had a very comprehensive list of brands uh, comprehensive list of uh, categories colors and all okay so we decided to use that information in our favor so uh, we first try to use a standard so basically we pose this problem as a classification problem first where we actually try to find out whether this particular node is a valid node or not we have to just classify it right so there are lots of standard standard algorithms like svm or uh, <coughs> linear regression and all right so we can use that right to get uh, the data but because of noise and because of outliers uh, this uh, the accuracy was not that good so after lots of uh, basically after lots of iterations we decided to use weak learning algorithm so basically uh, the fund of weak learning algorithm or ensemble is to learn small and weak classifiers so basically weak classifier is like they use just one rule to classify a particular node okay so we actually learn n number of classifiers then we combine them uh, using a weighted average to get a final output okay so we use our domain specific knowledge for that as well as uh, the uh, past history okay so <clears throat> let me just give you one small demo so uh, after getting a information uh, we learn lots of small classifiers and then we stored that classifier in terms of either a uh, model like uh, crf model or sva model or in terms of uh, regular expressions okay so we have lots of small small uh, weak learners that we learned and we use them to get so let's say uh, we have a html page and we need to classify that html page into uh, so basically we need to uh, extract valid nodes from that right so after running this process each and every node is picked from the html page it is passed to all the classifiers and after getting a result from all the classifiers we simply combine the result to check whether that particular node is valid or not so for example in this particular html that i showed you a uh, few minutes back it contains 1250 nodes in overall which which are either uh, recommended urls links some other information right 
but out of that only 25 nodes are valid uh, or they contains the information which is important to us right so after doing that we actually get a uh, class name uh, a node id and its uh, tag so basically after getting this we can aut automate the xpath process to scrap the data okay and using that xpath whatever we get we simply use it uh, to uh, push it to our attribute extractor okay so attribute extractor basically it also has lots of uh, classifiers plus we pre predominantly use crf condition as random field uh, to actually tag different things so this was the title okay and these are the attributes that we extract from here so after solving this problem using machine learning the process that took 15 days it get reduced to almost 30 hours. So that means we can actually uh, do crawling almost after every th uh, three or four days actually. Yeah. So yeah, that is the smart way how we uh, use to or how we solve problems. The other challenge or the other test case that I want to talk about is like how can we provide a best deal to user. So before going to this, do you have any questions regarding the first demo? <laughs> yeah, so as I said, we used to do this manually, right? Yeah. So uh, because of uh, our crawling algorithm is very good, so we have lots of pages, thousands of pages per uh, category, uh, uh, sorry, per portal. And uh, we have almost, uh, I think, yeah, uh, almost 250 portals, okay, in our system. So that means we have sufficient data, okay. So uh, as I said, we used to manually uh, get nodes first, right, XPaths. So from that, actually extracting information and processing that information was very easy. So yes, our first phase was manual effort, but after that, uh, it's everything automated. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So basically, as I said, uh, for example, if we are talking about a particular, at, so uh, a particular node, Okay, so the first uh, classifier that we learn is like whether that particular node is contained any keyword uh, like copyright, call us, email us, contact us, right? So it's very simple rule-based classifier which has some certain set of keywords. So if it has that, that means that node is not valid, right? The other feature that you can use is like uh, whether that particular node contains any specific attribute. Right, so if you write a classifier for color-based attribute, so you feed all the color names to it as a valid, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, as a uh, positive example, and everything else as a negative example, right? So based on that, you will get, uh, it is also a weak learner basically. So based on that, you will get uh, one more weightage, right? So after getting all the results, all you have to do is like get the weighted average. So each classifier has its own set of features here. It's not like a common set of features used throughout the process. Yeah. 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 Uh, this might sound very primitive, but uh, 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 for collecting the attributes, mm -hmm. uh, instead of going to the next, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the vendor, uh, going to the source didn't work for you, or was there any limitation in that? Like, these are the standard uh, products that we are talking about, not yes. non-standard ones. So why don't we, uh, I mean, was the, what, what was the uh, difficulty in going to the source or the manufacturer uh, to get these attributes? Uh, yeah, so basically uh, we have type with lots of brands. So from that, whatever data we get is really good. But if we are uh, here, the problem that uh, I'm talking about is regarding a particular vendor who is providing us just a browser, right? So many times browsers doesn't contains all the information, uh, all complete information, okay. So there are attributes which are not present there, but as per users, they are important, right? So to populate that attributes, we are using this information. So my question is, so uh, the different products have different variants, like uh, according to different colors, the price may vary. Mm -hmm. So how do you ta are tackling the, these kind of problems? So like there are different swatches like, drop down swatches containing the size, color swatch, and all different types. Right. So are you uh, like taking care of these or just like the first 
a price of the yeah. on the page so basically uh, we actually divided our categories into two broader part one is hard categories and one is soft categories so in hard categories per se uh, they are the categories which has uh, lots of things in common and they don't change that frequently for example mobiles right or uh, <clears throat> let's say uh, tablets right so if you compare mobiles and tablets they have lots of attributes common to them right they have primary camera they have ram they have memory so we club categories into a different subgroups and we learn uh, classifiers for that particular subgroups only so whenever we get a particular title we first categorize in it into a specific category and then we use classifiers for that particular category uh, on that title only so yeah uh, after getting the list of 25 nodes mm -hmm. how are you able to ignore the dom structure and getting the exact category or exact price out of it because the dom node may vary right randomly on each of the product websites so uh, you mean to say the information that the attributes that we extract yes how do you get one to one mapping saying category is short sleeve with mm -hmm. the confirmation so what is the confidence level related to it or uh, what is the logic behind getting that okay so basically uh, after studying lots of portals we find out that some portals some standard portals like uh, flipkart or snapdeal they have their own unique way to write uh, information okay so if you so for example let's so if you see flipkart it follows this convention for all the products irrespective of its category okay so from this if you actually learn a pattern that if you get uh, two attributes uh, or two keywords there there may be a chance that this particular keywords is a attribute and this particular keywords is a value right so here we use pattern learning okay uh, plus uh, actually uh, we have uh, we build crf models where we feed information to it uh, in case of if we have a description like this okay so for example here if you want to check if this particular uh, thing is hand wash or machine wash right so for this type of things we simply build a crf model where we manually tag the data and learn the crf model so whenever it gets something like this it simply labeled that particular thing as machine wash or hand wash right using some label then based on weightage average of both rule based plus crf model we can get the final value uh, yeah so as i said our system actually tries to learn these patterns or this information in each iteration so whenever we finish our first iteration we manually check the data okay after manually checking the data we feed up it into catalog and that information is one again used to run or relearn our uh, models so basically if it happens that for a particular portal the pattern got changed that simply means uh, all the information coming from that portals is not valid right so basically instead of uh, say sleeves uh, short sleeves there may be a chance that sleeves short sleeve here and fabric short sleeve uh, and fabric information here right so in that case maybe we'll be based on this rule based system we'll get sleeves equals to fabric right which is wrong uh it right? yes it can be a possibility so but in that case actually we have to think differently right but currently uh, for this sites these models works and if we get wrong data at that time i think learning patterns from that or getting information uh, using some other technologies will definitely help here yeah uh no see we are getting data from flipkart yes but we are not selling it we are simply utilizing the knowledge contains in that particular web page right we are not see basically we are selling products but from vendors the information that we are crawling from flipkart is simply attributes or knowledge about that product right and even if flip yeah so uh adding to that actually we have uh, we are actually planning to tie up with lots of manufacturers lots of brands directly right in that case even if flipkart uh, sorry flipkart blocks us we simply get data from any other sources right so this is like automation of the manual effort that we are taking so that we can get 
information as much fast as possible right okay that's the aspect here uh, so how do you manage your inventories like uh, like reservation i mean just uh, suppose a vendor has five mobile phones in stock mm -hmm. and uh, i want to buy three online through your app and okay. suppose my friend also visits this retail store mm -hmm. and wants three so how do you manage that uh, that question actually i i think uh, siddharth or bragadesh can answer that question so yeah, can, can we cover the second demo yeah uh, basically, we are short on time. Can I just cover my second demo first, and then we can? Okay, sure. Thank you very much. Come. Yeah. Okay. The next uh, case study that we are trying to solve here is like how to provide best deal to user. Okay. So, <clears throat> objective was uh, to uh, basically recommend. So basically, if user is searching something, okay there may be a chance that he has a vague idea about that particular product in his mind right so can we actually recommend a good product or a base product which contains that particular attributes plus uh, some other good feature about that right so for example if you are searching a mobile phone which has uh, let's say 13 megapixel camera and 2 gb ram right but 8 gb memory so 8 GB storage. So, can we actually uh, recommend other product which has all these features plus some good features as well, right? So, we try to solve that problems using recommendation systems. Uh, so, we basically combined attribute based recommendation system plus collaborative filtering, okay? But as we are hyper local, we have to think about a very important third feature here, and that is location. So there may be a chance that what your user is searching and whichever the product is very much similar to that particular product is not present in that location. So how to solve that thing? Then what to recommend to user, right? So here our recommendation system is not only based on user's uh, criteria, it should be based on location as well, okay? So here uh, we build a model uh, where we try to find out a uh, score for each product in our uh, app. Uh, we call it as Zopper score. So basically, Zopper score is calculated based on uh, the product features. So if a particular product has all the latest features or all the good features, it has more Zopper score. Okay. And uh, whenever a particular user is searching something, so based we actually study uh, the user's behavior throughout our app. We try to personalize it, and then based on user's location, uh, we try to give a base product based on Zopper score to him. Okay, so basically, uh, if a particular user is searching something, uh, uh, in this case, a washing machine, okay, so these are the recommend, re recommended products for a user in Bangalore as compared to user in Delhi. So, uh, basically, this particular washing machine is 5.5 kg with same brand, okay. But for that particular price range, that particular user can actually get a 6 kg washing machine, okay, with the same brand and some good features, okay. So here, uh, along with 5.5 kg, we are actually uh, recommending him 6 kg washing machines as well. And that recommendations is actually getting changed based on his location, okay. So, yeah, here, to uh, actually achieve that, we have to think about two problems. First is personalization and second is data warehousing. So in personalization, based on user sessions and user's past history, we try to build a user persona where we try to find out what are the categories or products user are searching, what are his base categories and products, and how we, based on that information, and by adding it with information of some other users, how can we collaborate the information and give him best results, okay. So for this, we are currently building uh, our own data warehousing system where we try to collect data from all the sources, process it, and analyze it. So yeah, that's the next thing uh, that is in pipeline. So any question regarding this demo? Uh, no, it's not, it's basically, uh, uh, so basically we actually find out few features for each category or each product, okay. 
and we assign weight to each feature. So basically, it's a linear regression type of things where for each features we calculate the weight, we uh, dynamically change the weighting based on the new uh, products in the market, and from that actually we are calculating a Zopper score. So let's say if there is a latest product in the market, it has a higher Zopper score as compared to the old product, but as time pass, its Zopper score keeps on decreasing. Hypermarket, no, for calculating Zopper score, actually we didn't use hypermarket. For calculating Zopper score, we are simply using product features. Okay, the features that we uh, actually uh, find out for a particular category. After getting that, while recommending a product, we are using location. So it's two different problem actually. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how are you measuring the effectiveness of uh, the scores that you are calculating? Uh, effectiveness. Okay, so first thing, the, as I said, the scores that we are calculated, they are based on the latest technologies or latest uh, features in that particular category, right? So if a particular phone is containing everything latest, so for example, let's say in case of OnePlus One, it has the lowest price, right? It has uh, all the good features that we can call as flagship killer features, right? So after calculating all these features, we actually assigning it a number, right? And all the Zopper score for all the products in that uh, category are relative to the topmost, right? So based on that, we are actually uh, calculate the ranking while showing that particular uh, product to the user. So let's say if you are searching a mobile, so whatever mobile you are getting, they are based on a Zopper score, okay? So then we actually check whether a user actually clicking on uh, first or second link or not, right? So based on user's click log, we get to know that uh, even though we are giving more Zopper score to this particular category, uh, or, uh, sorry, this particular product, user is not clicking on that, right? So that is a feedback loop. So based on that feedback loop, we basically can solve the problem. 